We need to understand the limitations and capabilities of the misfire monitors. We have 200 rev monitors. These are for looking at misfires that can damage the catalytic converter. They are one trip codes that will usually blink the check engine light if there's a failure. The normal misfire for two trips is a 1000 rev counter. It counts the percentage of failures in a thousand revs. It's going to be using the crankshaft and camshaft pickup to do this. Now we need to talk about these crank and camshaft because sometimes we see vehicles that have a low data rate crankshaft pickup going into the ignition and at the same time a separate high data rate crankshaft position going into the PCM. It is the high data rate crankshaft position sensor we need for doing this. And we have a newer uh, type of misfire. It's a neural network misfire, something that tries to duplicate the human brain. It's a dedicated microprocessor inside the PCM with a computer system to design to perform tasks or make decisions based on generalized patterns it has derived from data. It basically learns how this engine runs and identifies misfires. But it doesn't matter which monitor you have. The PCM is going to help you identify misfire. The bad news is sometimes it won't identify misfire you think it should identify. We've got to talk about that. And sometimes you do everything you think you know to fix it, and it keeps calling for a misfire, indicating you need to go deeper in your misfire analysis. We talk first about our crankshaft profile correction. Now, this crankshaft profile correction must be learned to account for the mechanical deviations in the manufacturing process. And it's usually done on deceleration. It usually requires a three-step process. We take the vehicle up to 60 miles an hour, take our foot off the gas, let it coast down below 40 miles an hour without touching the brakes. So go up to 60, coast down below 40, don't touch the brake. We are usually going to have to do this after we've cleared memory or we have disconnected the battery. Now, also keep in mind, we don't want to overlook, there are software programs on bi-directional that will help you relearn the crankshaft position signal. Utilize those when they're available. This is our crankshaft position signal at the bottom here in yellow. This is a high data rate. There's 36 of these in each one. At the top, we have our camshaft. The camshaft helps us identify which one of these signals is on compression and which one is on wasted spark, particularly with the DIS. In coil on plug, it tells us which spark plug to fire when it's on compression and we fire only one spark plug. Here is a hall effect, nice and square, and it shows us the crankshaft position and we have the electronic spark control to show you. We are going to be learning the spacing to understand what normal variation is on this particular vehicle. doesn't matter which type you have. The question was, have you learned the process? Use your scan tool to see if it has something like the PID like this. MP learn. Yes or no. If it's no, you have not learned the profile. Go either do your bidirectional or your 60 back down to 40 D cell without braking. On Ford, you may have to go to mode 6 because mode 6 has a special test ID. Test ID number 56, component ID 00. It's monitored ignition events. If the monitored ignition events counter counts up to an excessive number, the, camshaft pro the crankshaft profile was not learned. Now, what this does is it has a limit on how long it will count before it learns. Here's our example. Down there in red is a failure. It is our code 56 misfire monitor, SID00. It's monitored ignition events. Our maximum allowable value for this vehicle is the third column on the right, 4,000 events. The test value highlighted in red is 19,944 counts, 
almost five times as many counts as it should make before it identifies the correct profile. So when you see this, you probably are not going to get a misfire code, even though you may have a misfire. This is the type of information we're trying to stress to you. Now, as we look at these, we're going to see that they show practically zero. Other things to give you. Here's a Ford example, a code P1309. It says the crank crank profile was not stored. And if it's not stored, the misfire monitor can't run. You will have definite misfires and not know why. And that's the subject for this one right here. Some other examples. A P0371, crank pulse is not correct. It doesn't like the regularity. Usually it, the software compares the expected number of crankshaft pulses to the appropriate number of camshaft signals. If they don't agree, we can't set misfire codes because we've got a crank pickup problem. Other examples. P340. Had this one recently. It's an ignition coil primary problem. It was on a coil-on plug. They couldn't understand why it had a misfire and it had no codes for misfire. However, it did have a code that says the ignition primary had a problem. If it's identified a problem, happened to be P0345 in our particular case, which was cylinder 5 on a call on plug, it can't do a misfire count because we've got a call primary problem. Pay attention. Look at what you're looking for. Here's a P0322 crankshaft position signal is erratic or missing. Cam or crank misalignment. This happens to be a Ford on a 1336. Thir crankshaft signal variation not learned on a GM. Same code, slightly different meaning. 1398. Crankshaft sensor signal was has too much variation on a Chrysler. Pay attention to these. And always remember, if we have something indicating the computer has problems, you can't trust what the computer is doing. Make these repairs first because something is going on with the computer. Now, here's what we're talking about. We got all these different events, and we're going to take a look at it. If we were to magnify the spacing in between, what we would find when we have a misfire, we would have a small amount of space that stretched out longer than it should be. You probably can't see it with your naked eye. That's why we made up this magnified view, because it's impossible for us to find one that is truly a misfire and show it to you. So pay attention. You get P300. It's a general misfire. Then we have very specific cylinder misfires. P301 up to 310. We have crankshaft position, camshaft position. Are they working and are there is there a correlation? Has the system learned them? If it hasn't learned them, we're not going to be able to fix the problems yet. So all of these things have to be working. Load sensors, are they making sense? Mass airflow, map sensors. We'll talk more about that in a minute here. Are there PCM-related DTCs saying the PCM cannot make good logical sense? Is the fuel far too rich or too lean? Look at long-term fuel trim. And we're going to have a lot of talk about long-term fuel trim later. But let's talk about this. A misfire monitor can be blocked and not run if a critical component has failed. Any DTC that relates to a component or system that may cause a drivability problem should be checked out first. We cannot say that enough. A few years back, we had some electronic pressure control solenoids on Ford. It was a transmission code. But what the car did, or the PCM did, to be more specific, is it went into a torque management mode. In torque management, it started randomly shutting off cylinders to prevent over-torquing the transmission because it could no longer accurately control transmission pressures. We see a similar thing with Ford in their cylinder head temperature. If it gets too high, it starts active management of the cylinders causing a rolling misfire. 
Now, have you ever seen a Ford with a dirty mass airflow that had a false code? Why does a dirty mass airflow sometimes set a code for misfire or for lane fuel mixture? Well, let's talk about that. If the vehicle has a dirty mass airflow, the vehicle, vehicle is receiving incorrect information about engine load. The math signal usually indicates lower than actual load, particularly in an off-idle situation. Less fuel, cause, which causes a long-term fuel trim shift, and sets a false code when the mixture reaches the control limits. But if we have a vehicle that has a dirty mass airflow and unbalanced injectors, one or more of the, in, one or more of the injectors can be way too lean and lean out the cylinder causing a misfire before we reach the level to set the fuel code. This is not uncommon. We've seen it before. So we have come to a decision here. Do you have a misfire that you can begin diagnosing? If you do, start your misfire diagnosis wherever you feel comfortable. We're going to talk more about that. If not, we need to go talk some more about how to decide when the misfire was present. Now, always check for stored trouble codes to see if a fault may be causing misfires, like the lean misfire P0171. On Forge, you may want to look at mode 6. Freeze frame, we keep harping on it. It will indicate the conditions you should be having and it'll tell you when the fault was set. If you want to retest, use free frame because you must duplicate the operating conditions within 375 RPM and very near the same load when the first code was set in order to get it to rerun the test. Fuel trim and misfires, DTCs are going to take priority over all the others and overwrite any other freeze frame data. If the misfire isn't present at idle, operate the vehicle under load. Accelerate hard. See if it does a problem. Brake torque in the service bay. Duplicate freeze frame. I know we keep coming back to freeze frame over and over again, but it is important to drive the freeze frame in order to make things work. GM and Chrysler has parameter IDs that do misfire counters. We're dearly in love with GMs. And in Ford, you're going to have to use Mode 6 on a lot of their vehicles. Here is the GM readout on our auto ingenuity. Take some time to understand what we're looking at. If current misfire has no misfire counts or low misfire counts, but the history shows misfire counts that are higher, that's telling you you're not duplicating the condition that caused the misfire. That's very important. You need to operate in another condition. Here's Ford's Mode 6 data. We picked a section of it here in the middle. We first checked to make sure it has completed the monitor. And we looked down here at our profile correction. We now have a count of 156. And we allowed 4,000. So we've learned it. In the center, we have our miscounts. What we like about mode 6 is it gives us specifications. Let's blow this up so we can look at it. Here's our identifiers, and then we have columns of data. The first column of all zeros. That's our misfire values that were recorded. The second column, which is all zeros, is the minimum misfires. And the last column on the right is the specification for the maximum misfire rate. Now, what's good about this is you can see exactly how close you are to setting a misfire code and which cylinders are doing it. So utilize this. Yes, it's something different, and it's not as convenient as GM. So we have two scenarios. If you can determine which cylinders are misfiring, move to those cylinders, or that cylinder, as the case may be, and attack them. If the misfires are random, Start the diagnosis with looking at the common areas, like fuel mixture, which is going to take us to fuel control. We're going to have a lot of talk about that later on. EGR can throw off the balance of delivery and cause misfires. And B+, plus system power, that's usually going to be common to all cylinders, giving them random misfires. So here are your possible causes. Remember. Ignitions are most likely, followed by uneven fuel delivery or fuel control. Those are problems we're going to be finding. And the EGRs we just talked about, 
in the basic engine problems. Do not ignore basic engine problems. We still have the basic engine. Plugged exhaust can cause great reduction in power, which may be misinterpreted as a random misfire. And again, the final thing we just talked about, B plus to the system, we have seen it cause happen. So you've just sorted it out. Is it cylinder specific or is it random? You decide. Do what is easy first. Stake the things that are easiest to do. And if you want to start where experience might offer some insight into the problem. Try corrections that have worked in the past with similar problems.